Thank you for joining me. I'm Carolyn Jardina. Uh, today we have Chase Irvin, who shot Black Klansman, Lena Sangren, who shot First Man, and Maddie Libatik, A Star is Born. So first question, the director and cinematographer relationship is obviously one of the most important on the set, but what happens when you don't agree? How do you say no, or how do you have that conversation? Oh, there's wow. a lot of different ways to deal with that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of politics in it, right? How you work with people in general. But um, I mean, you need to have a great relationship with a director. And I think like normally, I try to figure out the, how the director works and what he likes. And uh, I, I like to try to adapt to that director's style of working, you know, and hopefully you don't get so many situations that are huge conflicts. It's usually rather in certain situations you may have conflicts and then, yeah, I mean, you have to, I don't know, you have to solve it. Uh, yes. Now, in, in your case, uh, First Man was your second collaboration with Damien Chazelle, you shot La La yeah. Land previously. How, how did the two of you like to work and have those conversations? It was sort of a 180 from La La Land to do First Man because Damien didn't want to do, his style of doing La La Land was you know, very much like a whimsical um, musical, right? So in First Man, he wanted it to be very realistic and um, and, and emotionally immersive. Apollo 11, Houston. Let us know when you enter the limb. Closed up the hatch, over. Eagle, this is uh, Houston. We see the optics zero switch on. Uh, before you take some marks, uh, don't forget to cycle it back off and on and then on, over. For us to work that through, we just have to, you know, talk about talk a lot about um, his visions and try to figure out how this film can be told in a in a in that type of way and, and develop that together. Uh, and and over time in prep, you sort of find the language of how you do things and hopefully that, you know, works together, right? Like mm -hmm. that's how you have to sync with with each other. Cheers. Spike and I had great chemistry right off the bat, so. When it came to those scenarios where maybe opinions weren't aligned, it was mostly, you know, something that we were always respectful of one another. He and I, uh, I think we m mainly work off our intuition. I've noticed that Spike would always be there way earlier than anyone else. And I think he would really meditate on the what the day's work was and what he wanted to achieve and different ideas and experiments that he was ex interested in doing. Well, I've established contact and created some familiarity with the Klansman over the phone. I'll continue in that role, but I'll need another officer, surprise, surprise, a white officer to play me when they meet face to face. That's my point exactly. Chief, black Ron Stallworth over the phone, white Ron Stallworth face to face, so there becomes a combined Ron Stallworth. Can you do that? I believe we can with the right white man. We can do anything. When it came to executing it, it was really me trying to be as vulnerable and sen sensitive as possible to what we were doing. And in those moments, kind of like, you know, after maybe one or two takes, you know, really trying to digest it and feel like if it was good enough for what you were doing. And, you know, maybe we would disagree, you know, on a particular thing, but it was never, it was always love, you know? It was never animosity or hate or anything sure. like that. He knew I cared, so. Well, the main thing is that you, they, you, you have the same goal. You're trying to tell the same story. Mm -hmm. And I think it, the conflicts happen when people start to divert from that and they, going into the preparation, you really need to get on the same page. So if you're trying to do something, if a director's trying to do something different that's outside of what you've done with them before, mm -hmm. it's incumbent upon us to actually help them get there. So the ideas have to flow, and then there has to be some kind of foundation and agreement to what you're trying to accomplish. And then when those conflicts, conflicts usually arise when there's a, a deviation from what you guys have talked about, or mm -hmm. a miscommunication about what's important in the scene. So it's really important to listen. You know, sometimes we just talk, and arguments are on set in general, not just because between directors and DPs, it's because nobody's listening to the other person, they're actually just talking. But, um, in, in both these cases, it's, it's the same thing. It's like you're the two, a director-DP relationship that already had a visual idea of how to make the film. And if there's any conflict, it's just because 
it's probably just a miscommunication. And if you listen to it, you could figure out how to get out of it. Now, in your case, this was Bradley Cooper's directorial debut. So what was it like planning and starting the collaboration with him? I had never worked with an actor who was also in the film. Uh, I've worked with plenty of actors that turned director. But um, this was another level for me. So I just wanted to support him knowing that he wasn't going to be at the monitor looking at things, you know. So he wore many hats. I mean, this is a guy who was producing the movie, who was helping write the film. He's going to be number one, two on the call sheet, and he's also directing it. So the least I could do is actually pay attention to what he's doing as a performer yeah. as well as, you know, um, as a uh, director. Almost every single person that I've come in contact with in the music industry has told me that my nose is too big and that I won't make it. Your nose is too big? Yeah. Your nose is beautiful. Can I touch your nose? Oh, my gosh. Let me just touch it for a second. <laughs> oh, I feel like I'm dying. I was trying to help him by being the best filmmaker I could and giving him the freedom to experiment with where the camera goes, you know? And, uh, but then I got that sense because I just talked to him. I mean, I, you spend, sometimes the director gets away from you in prep because they're pulled in many directions. And it, for us, it's like we're just trying to bring them back into what we're trying to, you know, we're, we're here sort of guarding the gate of filmmaking, you know, amongst all the other things that are happening. So, uh, you know, when the director's getting pulled in a different direction in prep, you just gotta pull them back into our world. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that's important. And we did that, we, we, we made time for each other in prep. And um, I think that's why there was a successful relationship coming out of that. Yeah, that's key. This year we see a director, Alfonso Cuaron, serving as director of photography on Roma, and we've seen other examples of that recently, such as Paul Thomas Anderson with Phantom Thread. What are your thoughts on the director serving as the director of photography? I don't like to be out of a job, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, Alfonso is a talented, talented filmmaker. And they, they were filmmakers. You know, uh, digital technology is such that we don't, they don't have the burden of exposing film. Um, so it, it does open it up a little bit uh, to creativity for somebody who doesn't, isn't necessarily a cinematographer, but the people you're mentioning are really well versed in technical things. Yeah, and, and they all have their methods of how, how you want to work. And um, if, you, if you are that type of person who, who can handle Perhaps it's easier for him to actually sit by the camera and, 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 and do the lighting, like, to communicate his story. I think, um, um, I mean, my experience with directors is the ones I work with is that, we, that they, they also need us for, you know, have a partner to co communicate and co collaborate with to, to create um, the visual storytelling. But, um, I mean, there's directors that are scoring their own music and cutting their films and stuff. So, I mean, they do a great job, too. I think it's, it's tricky. It's like we sometimes, you know, sometimes I love to operate, so I put an operator off, you know, to not work on, on a film because I like to operate. Like on First Man, I actually operated a camera, and on Battle of the Sexes, I operated a camera. While on La La Land, I had operators because it um, depends on how I want to tell the story and when, when, I, when I feel it's important for me to be closer to the actual making of the image. And, and sometimes it's better to have someone else do it. So I guess in this case, it was a very intimate story for him and, and, um, and, and very personal. And perhaps he felt, you know, it was more immersive for him to be actually doing it himself, like in a small way, some, somehow, I don't know, uh, the backstory. But, but um, I mean, I think we're all, we're all filmmakers and the most important part is to make it the, your process you want, I think. I also feel like PTA and Alfonso Cuaron worked with Total Masters for oh, so course. long. Yeah. So that kind of, you know, that informs a lot of the language that they're using and, and um, just aesthetics, aesthetic view. I mean, anytime I work with a director, I'm so much informed. And I, I learn so much about cinematography just based off of simple things of divergent thinking because they're having a totally different perspective than I would have. No, but they also have the added advantage that they've cut movie after movie. Mm. So there's an efficiency to what they're able to do with the camera because they, they, they're the ones that sit in the editing room and we don't. So when Alfonso Cuaron or uh, Paul Thomas Anderson is sitting there, he probably, they probably already have an idea of how they're going to enter a scene and exit one. So, um, you know, the, it, the camera is kind of a shared object by the cinematographer and director anyway. There stands the reason that, uh, you know, directors now with 
today's technology can make they could they could shoot their own movies. Mm -hmm. um, not in all cases. It depends on the screenplay. But like in this one, it seemed like it was tailor made for that. Now another another thing that's obviously been discussed a lot this year is that women are really underrepresented in your field and about having more diversity. Do you personally make efforts to hire more women and a more diverse crew? Mm -hmm. Well, diversity in every way. Yeah, never. You know, I mean, it's good to have different perspectives but in different uh, cultures, and it's we should take advantage of it. And then it's become more and more common, you know, to be able to hire uh, minorities as well as gender. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, of course. I mean, I think that's a movement that we should all support. So yeah. I think everybody's doing it. Absolutely. You know? yeah. So are you seeing changes already? Yeah. Yeah, I get a lot of inspiration from having women around the camera and just a different POV, different way of working, less testosterone. You yeah. know, it kind of like, I don't know, I'm a very sensitive person. Just in general, I, all my best friends growing up were women, so I've always felt way more comfortable in that kind of environment. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that kind of growth in gripping and electric, but in camera definitely have worked with focus pullers and loaders and all that stuff with, with women. Last Definitely. question I'd like each of you to answer. Uh, if you could work with any director, who would you like to work with and why? Oh, oh man. Can you pick a dead one? <laughs> 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 who do you have in mind? I don't know. I wanted those guys to go so I can keep thinking about it. <laughs> I'm curious on these guys, actually, that, that, that shoots themselves, actually. What they're what they don't need from us, like, you know, like it, it would be interesting to work with a director right. who usually works by himself. That would be interesting. Mm. Yeah, but, I, think I mean, there's so many interesting. Guys. I think it's always like you learn so much from each and every one. They all, everyone are different humans and different people, and they have different uh, way of working. And I I really just appreciate like all that, you yeah, know, all, all that different inspiration you get from, and you learn so much from all of them. Yeah, I think if you works. can push each other, you know, anytime you've come on, I've come on to a project. I feel like I've garnered an aesthetic view that may be so different than somebody else's mm. simply because my experiences as a human being that I've absorbed and all these sensory things that I'm trying to like express now mm. can become unique. And when you're working with a director who has that as well, kind of a particular taste, yeah. those together kind of become, they, they can either become clash or weird. they can become something really unique, yeah. you know? Totally, it always becomes something unique, I think, yeah. with, with uh, different yeah. people doing things together. And then well, who you've worked with in the past also sort of speaks to who you are at the time you're working with mm. somebody new. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and vice versa. And what's but, you um, it, so I like I like the idea of working with somebody who um, maybe works in a genre that I don't work in, but does it in a very interesting way, like a Wes Anderson or somebody. You know, I don't do comedy, but he does the type of film that I haven't done before. And mm. he does it in a very stylized, specific, directorial way. Nice. And, um, but it's hard to name one person. Well, we need to wrap up, but thank you so much for joining us. Thank, thank you. you.